بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الدرس الرابع تعال نتعرف على الوطن العربي الموقع على خريطة الحضارة It's place in the map of civilization جان آدمز مرة أخرى مع وليد في شقته بعد أن تناول طعام الغداء So once again مرة أخرى with وليد in his apartment في شقته بعد أن after تناول the two of them have had طعام الغداء the, their lunch في الخارج outside One thing I noticed the other day, which is a good point to make now, when I was uh, teaching some students in the university and we were learning prepositions in Arabic and we were learning kharij, meaning like if you were to say huwa kharij al bayt, he is outside of the house, right? Using it as a dharf. When you're using it nekira like this to want to say somebody is outside of something then you have to put a word after it right a preposition is a word that, that indicates a relation between two things right uh, you know الهاتف على الطاولة the phone is on the table we have a thing and a relationship with another thing so you can say هو he خارج البيت is outside of the house if you want to say he is in the outside in general just saying he's outside you can't say huwa kharij, right? Some people uh, would say that. I mean, you could say huwa kharij, but the meaning would be implied that, that there's another word at the end that you're leaving off. Huwa kharij al bayt or huwa kharij al ghurfa. But if you just want to say he is outside in general, like in the outdoors, then you have to say al kharij, huwa fil kharij. So kharij, when it's uh, nakira like this, used as a as a dharf it's going to be a mudaf and a mudaf ilay it is kharij of something else if you want to just use the name of the outside saying someone is outdoors then you have to say fi al kharij walid yashkuru jan ala al ghada walid thanks jan for the lunch thumma yuqaddimu lahu tabaqan fihi naw'un min al halwa then he uh, gives him يقدم له literally meaning puts forward for him قدم يقدم فم شرف يشرف تشريفا here the mustar تقديما to present something ثم يقدم he presents له for him طبقا a plate right the, we saw in uh, earlier lesson the طبق means plate the gem is الطباق on the pattern as'al, a very common pattern for the gem. Fihi no'un min al halwa. In it is a type of sweets, halwa. Jan wa walid ya'kulani al halwa, thumma yajlisani lil hadithi an al watan al arabi, fayakulu jan. So the two of them, ya'kulan, they eat, right? The muthanna, yaf'alu yaf'alani, ya'kulu ya'kulani. كولاني the dual case الحلوة ثم يجلساني يجلس يجلساني the dual case للحديث for speaking عن الوطن العربي so John says ما اسم الحلوة اللذيذة يا وليد what is the name of the delicious حلوة أو وليد right so لذيذة means delicious and here it's a صفة describing حلوة Halwa is mu'annath, feminine, so ladida is going to be feminine, so that the sifa matches the mawsuf. Mismu al-halwa al-ladidati, ya walid, walid responds, hadihi halwa arabiyyatun qadimatun. This is an old Arab sweet, right? Hadihi halwa, so we have a mubtada, hadihi halwa, a khabar, and then arabiyyatun uh, is a sifa, and then qadimatun, Old is another sifa. Walaha asma'un kathira. And it has many names. Notice here kathiratun is in the singular feminine, right? It's a it's a mufrid, mu'annith, because it's a sifa describing asma, which is a non-human plural. 
So non-human plurals are conjugated, the words that refer to them are conjugated for singular feminine. وَلَكِنْ نَسْمَهَا فِي مِصْرَ هُوَ سَدُّ الْحَنَكِ he said, but its name in Egypt is Saddul Hanak. So John says, أعرف أن كلمة سد تعني قفل أو إغلاق. He said, I know that the word سد means تعني. It means, uh, you know, being closed or locked, right? قفل the مصدر from قفل or إغلاق the مصدر from أغلق يغلق إغلاقا. Both meaning to close or lock something. Wali Biddabti Mithlu Kalima Asad al Ali Biddabt exactly. Like the word Asad al Ali, which is uh, the name of a dam in Egypt, right? Uh, so Asad, you know, uh, it's a mustar, but it can also be used. To refer to a thing itself, like a dam is called a sed. في مدينة أسوان في جنوب في جنوب مصر, like a sed al in the city of Aswan in the south of Mesir. فهو يصد مجرى النيل. So it blocks, يصد or closes off مجرى, the flowing of a Nile of the Nile River. وَيَحْجِزُ الْمِيَاهَ خَلْفَهُ And it restricts or blocks or holds back, reserves, حَجَزَ يَحْجِزُ to, to restrict or block something off. يَحْجِزُ الْمِيَاهَ It blocks the waters, right? المياه, plural of الماء, خلفه, behind it. جان وَلَكِنْ مَا مَعْنَى كَلِمَةِ الْحَنَكِ What's the meaning of the word الْحَنَكِ وَلِيد معناها سقف الفم. The meaning of it is the سقف, the roof of الفم, the mouth. أو الجزء الأعلى من الفم. Or the uppermost part, الجزء, the part الأعلى, here أسفة, describing جزء, the most high part, the most upper part, من الفم, from the mouth. جان. يعني اسم الحلوة هو انتظر, انتظر. دعني أفكر. So he's saying here, so you mean that the name of the sweet is, and then he's saying, wait a minute, in tether, wait a minute, in tether, da'ni, leave me, right? Da'ni is from wada'a, uh, yada'u, which means to leave something, right? And this is an example of a fi'al that is mithal, like we learned in the last lesson, the first letter of the fi'al is a weak letter, so it's dropped when we change it from madi to mudari. And in the command form, we're going to drop the harf of mudari, the ya, from the beginning. And then we're going to make it like it's medzum, so we put a sukun on the last letter, and we get da, the command from wada'a yada'u, so da means leave something. So here, da'ni, leave me. Ufekir, uh, to think, right? Basically, leave me, let me think. Da'ni ufekir. Al-ismu ya'ni sadda a'la al-fam. It means that it, that, that, uh, it blocks or closes off the top of the mouth or the highest part of the mouth. Aw imtila al-fam, or filling up the entire mouth, right? Imtila is the mustar, fa imtala'a yamtali'u. Imtila'an, to fill up. Wali, na'am, hadha sahih. Yes, this is correct. Jan, then he says, Ismun gharibun li naw'in min al-halwa. It's a strange name for a type of sweet. Man maqsoodu, ya tura. He says, Al maqsood, ya akhi. What is intended, O my brother? Anna al-ladhi ya'kulu hadhi al-halwa marratan yasuddu fahu wa yashba'u ila al-abad. What's intended is that the one who eats this halwa one time maratan yasuddu fahu, he closes off his mouth. Fahu here is, uh, it's a little bit complicated, but fem, the word for mouth. Sometimes when you connect al at the end of it, you can 
get rid of the mean and put an alif or a wow or a ya in its place, right? So instead of saying famuhu, famuhu, you can say fuhu, fuhu, and then when it's uh, mansub, you'll say fahu, and when it's majrur, you'll say fihi. So all of these mean his mouth. Fuhu fahu fihi. Hada fuhu ra'aytu fahu wa wada'a luqmatan fi fihi. The details of that we can learn somewhere else in uh, a more advanced level of grammar. But here we just need to know at least that fahu means his mouth. So the meaning is that the one who eats this one time yasuddu fahu wa yashba'u and is full and satisfied ila al-abad forever. John. Ah, fahimtu. Ah, now I understand. Wa la yatahaddathu ilayka an al-ghada'i marratan ukhra. Khasatan wa huwa ja'a. He says, and he will never speak to you about lunch again another time. Khasatan, especially, wa huwa ja'a. When he is hungry. Walid, la la, tastati'u an tatahaddatha ma shi'ta wa mata shi'ta. He said, no, no, tastati'u. You're able an tatahaddatha to speak ma shi'ta, what you want, wa mata shi'ta, and whenever you want. Right, this is from sha'a, to will. Sha'a, sha'a, sha'u, sha'at, sha'ata, shi'na, shi'ta, shi'tuma, shi'tum, shi'ti, shi'tuma, shi'tunna, shi'ta. Mata shitta whenever you want Anjami Anjami Wajabat al Taami Wal Af Wal Iftar Wal Ghada Wal Asha. He said you can speak whenever you want about all the meals of food. Anjami Wajabat al Taam on all the types of food, right? Wajabat is the plural of wajba we've learned before. A meal. So you can talk about all the meals of food you want. Al-iftar, breakfast. Wal-ghada, lunch. Wal-asha, dinner. Faqat la tantadr al-tanfeel. You can talk about it all you want, but just only la tantadr. Don't wait for al-tanfeel. Tanfeel, here is the mustar from nafadha, yunafidhu, meaning to carry something out. Nafadha, yunafidhu. From bab sharrafa you sharrifu, meaning for something to be carried out. So he's joking with him. He's saying, "No, you can talk about food all you want. Just don't expect me to actually give any to you." John responds, "Ala kulli halin ya walid. In any case, O walid, alhamdulillah, anna alhalwa leisa ismuha sadd al udhr." He said, "In any case." Alhamdulillah, that the name of the halwa is the you know sh the shutting of the the name of the halwa isn't shutting of the ears, shutting off of the ears. لأنني أريد أن أسمع بقية الحديث عن ال عن الوزارة والوزراء. I want to hear the rest, بقية of al hadith of the speech about al wizar, ministry, wal wuzar, the ministers. Walid says, الوزارة أو الحكومة هي التي تنفذ أي تقوم بالأعمال والمهام الضرورية للدولة في جميع الميادين ولذلك تسمى السلطة السلطة التنفيذية. He says the uh, ministry or the government, الحكومة, it is the one which هي التي تنفذ carries out a تقوم ب right so you know نفذ and قام ب can mean the same thing to undertake to carry out تقوم ب الأعمال the you know the jobs والمهام and the important things الضرورية those important necessary things للدولة for the country في جميع الميادين in all of the different situations, right? Mayadin, here is the plural of Maidan. So Maidan, 
means like, you know, a, a square or a field or a place where things happen, but it also can be used in kind of a metaphorical way to mean situations, basically, or scenarios. And because of that, to summa its name as Sultata at Tanfidiya. The I guess is like executive power, basically the power that of carrying things out. Sulta means authority or power. Tanfidiya, right, as a nisba ila tanfid, the carrying out of something. Jan, wa hal hunaka sultatun ukhra. Are there other authorities or other powers, right? So sultat is the plural of sulta. Now, هناك السلطة التشريعية. He said yes. There is the uh, power of making laws. Basically, تشريع is the مصدر from شرع يشرع to make a law. So هناك السلطة التشريعية. The uh, power or the authority of making laws. وهي المجالس النيابية. And it is called المجالس النيابية. التي ينتخبها الشعب. So ينتخب is an important فعل to know from باب اختصر يختصر. So انتخب ينتخب which means to choose by voting basically. So انتخابات are elections from the مصدر from انتخب ينتخبها. Or from intakhaba yantakhibu. So here yantakhibu ha that are chosen or elected uh, by a sha'ab, by the people. Walaha asma'un wa suwarun mukhtalifa. And they have different names and different uh, images, right? Suwar is the plural of surah, but here meaning different forms, right? They take different forms. Fil bilad al Arabiya, in the Arab lands. Min hadihi al asma. So the different names of this, this power that uh, puts laws into place or passes laws in Arab countries. Majlis al-Shaab, wa Majlis al-Ummah, wa Majlis al-A'yan, wa Majlis al-Nawab, wa Majlis al-Shura. You know, each, name, each country they have their own name for what they call this uh, authority. Wa muhimmatu hadhihi al-majalisi isdar al qawanin ay so the job the, this of these uh, you know, majalis, these assemblies, is isdar, right, which is the masdar from asdara, yusdiru, from bab aqrama, yukrimu, iqraman, isdaran. So which in this case means to like enact or to pass, right, the isdar, the passing of al qawanin of the laws, a tashriya. That's what tashriya is, putting laws into place. Wal muwafaqa and agreement, muwafaqa is the mustar from wafaqa, yuwafiqu, muwafaqatan, from bab qatala, yuqatilu, muqatalatan. So, wal muwafaqa and agreement, ala siyasat al amati lit dawla, on the general politics of the country. والتصديق على المعاهدات الدولية. Here they have written دولية, but actually probably better would be دولية, uh, like international treaties. المعاهدات الدولية, uh, affirming international treaties. تصديق على المعاهدات الدولية. وإقرار الميزانية العامة. وإقرار الميزانية العامة. Uh, Affirming or approving the general budget. al mizaniya the budget. Al-Ama, the general budget. Then John says, وَغَيْرُ هَاتَيْنِ السُّلْطَتَيْنِ And other than these two authorities, Walid responds, السُّلْطَةُ الثَّالِثَةُ هِيَ السُّلْطَةُ الْقَضَائِيَ The third power is the basically legislative power, the legislative authority. You know, qada is a... Uh, uh, Carrying out a ruling in a legal case, so as sultatul qadaiya, that legislative uh, or legal authority, wahiya khasatun, and it is uh, specific to 
bil qadai wal mahakim of ruling like rule, legal rulings and the courts wal qadaya qadaya is the gem of qada wa taqti bayna afrad al sha'bi aw bayna al sha'bi wal hukuma this branch it the it issues rulings right taqdi from qada yaqdi qada yaqdi and then here taqdi because it's talking about a sulta which is mu'annath wa taqdi bayna afrad al sha'b it gives rulings or judges between uh, individuals of the people so afrad is the gem of fard one specific person right so it, they they uh, this branch it rules or, or or gives legal rulings between afrad al sha'b individuals from amongst the people aw bayna sha'bi wal hukuma or between the people and the government itself John says hadha bit tabi'i huwa an nizam al mawjud fi kathir min min bilad al alam this is of course bit tabi'i huwa an nizam it is the system al mawjud the present system or the system that exists fi kathir min bilad al alam in many of the countries of the world walidhalika fa huwa sahl al fahm and because of that it's easy to understand sahl al fahm taqriban closely or basically right taqriban means almost fa bilad al alam al ana tatashabahu wa tataqarabu bi fadl al taqaddum al ijtima'i wa al taqni وأيضا بفضل وسائل الاتصال الحديثة. This is so the countries of the world بلاد العالم الآن now at the present time تتشابه they resemble each other right this is from the فعل تشابه in the ماضي تشابه and then in the مضارع يتشابه يتشابهوا uh, from باب تقاتل يتقاتلوا and it has the meaning for things to resemble each other right so these countries the countries of the world now تتشابهوا they resemble each other وتتقاربوا from تقارب يتقاربوا تقاربا from the same باب تشابه يتشابهوا تشابها they are close to each other, right? This is from the root qurb, qaf, ra, ba, which means for things, something to be close. So they're close to each other, bifadlit taqaddum al ijtima'i, because of, with the benefit, the fadl of at taqaddum, of, of, of progress, al ijtima'i, uh, social progress, I guess you could say, with taqni and technological progress as well, right? Both of these are sifas describing taqaddum. Taqaddum is progress, so here uh, societal progress and technological progress. Wa aydan, and also bi fadli wasail al ittisal al haditha, because of the the benefit of uh, means of communication. Wasail al ittisal al haditha, modern. So this is also a sifa describing wasail al ittisal, so modern forms of communication. John says. كلمة أخرى يا وليد. One more word, يا وليد. لخص لي أسباب أهمية الوطن العربي كما تعرفها. لخص is a command, right? An amr from the فعل لخص يلخص تخليص, which means to summarize something. So لخص, right? To make that amr, we took the مضارع. Which is يلخص And we got rid of the harf مضارع And then Put a sakoon on the end as if it was مجزون لخص Summarize for me أسباب The reasons, right? أسباب is the gem of sabab أهميت The importance Of الوطن العربي كما تعرفها Like you know them As you understand them
فهمية الوطن العربي لها أسباب جغرافية واقتصادية وتاريخية وروحانية وفكرية He says the importance of the Arab world لها for it, right? Referring to importance لها using the دميرها because أهمية is feminine أسباب are causes جغرافية uh, geographical reasons اقتصادية uh, economic reasons تاريخية uh, historical reasons وروحانية and spiritual reasons وفكرية and uh, reasons because of uh, thought or ways of thinking philosophical reasons I guess you could say so all of these are sifas describing asbab جغرافية, اقتصادية, تاريخية, روحانية, وفكرية. John says, لنبدأ إذن. Let us start then. And here it's important to understand what's going on with لنبدأ. This is actually a command, right? From So the originally we had نبدأ. From بدأ, يبدأ. Here conjugated for نحن. نحن نبدأ. So we learned before how to make an emmer command when you're talking directly to someone else or you're ordering somebody in the second person, enta or nt, right? We, we did that when we did lachis here. We took you lachis, we got rid of the harf mudar and then put a sukun on the end. But there's another way to make a command when you're commanding someone in the third person or even in the first person. And that's using the lamb of emmer, the lamb of command. So you just put that lamb with a kesra at the beginning of your word and then you make it medzum and nabda'u we begin becomes li nabda let us begin right it's like you're commanding you're issuing a command to yourself but the meaning is let us begin li nabda idhan let us start idhan in that case bil asbab al jughrafiya with the geographical reasons Walid says, من الناهية الجغرافية from the geographical point of view or geographical perspective, right? ناهية is a, from a certain direction, right? So here meaning from a certain point of view, from the geographical point of view, meaning موقعه على خريطة العالم It's place on the world map. فهو مفترق للطرق بين قارات العالم it is, then it is, مفترقن للطرق, a crossroads, right? مفترقن للطرق is a crossroads. طرق is the gem, the gem of طريق, a road. So مفترق, cross, a crossing point للطرق, to, for different roads. بين قارات العالم, between the different continents of the world. وطريق هام مختصر يصل الشرق بالغرب بسهولة بسهولة rather ويصل and a important road an important path ومختصر uh, it's a, a path that is important هام ومختصر and short that يصل connects الشرق the east بالغرب with the west بسهولة with ease and يصل and يصل and سهولة are almost the same meaning. Both would be translated as with ease. So then John asks, والأسباب الاقتصادية and the economic causes? Walid responds, من الناحية الاقتصادية في الوطن العربي طروات طبيعية ومواد خام هامة لاقتصاد العالمي. From the Economic perspective in the Arab world are tharawat, resources, tabi'iyya, natural. So tabi'i is for something to be natural. Here is a sifa describing tharawat, which is like wealth, but here meaning resources, uh, the natural resources, wa mawad, and materials, kham, crude, you know, natural unprocessed materials, hamatun, that are important, lil iqtisad al alami to the world economy. أعظمها النفط 
the most important of them or the greatest of them, right? This is the ism tafdil from Alim. Aadamuha, the biggest or greatest of them is an nift, gas or petrol. Alladhi la hayata ala al ardi, the surah tilati na arifu hal ana biduni. That which there's no life, la hayata. And here it's mansub with a single fatha because this is la nafia lil jins. Negating the whole category of life, there's no life at all. Al al on the on the planet or on the land, the surah in the form or shape al na which we know al an at this time biduni without it. Wa fil dhatihi and at the same time يحتاج الوطن العربي إلى كميات هائلة من المنتجات الزراعية والصناعية من خارجه. So at the same time, يحتاج, احتاج, يحتاج means to be in need of something. So الوطن العربي is يحتاج, it's in need of كميات, large amounts, هائلة. Our kemiyat is amounts, and ha'ila is a sifa describing amounts, meaning very large, something that's ha'il, is something very big or something great. So large amounts, min al muntajat of the products, as zira'iyya, agricultural products, was sina'iyya, and uh, products that are produced in factories, basically. So both of these are sifas describing muntajat. Or muntajat products, min kharijihi from outside of it. So at the same time, fi waqti thatihi. In the same time, yahtaj al watan al arabiyu. The Arab world is in need ila kamiyat in haila of large amounts min al muntajat al ziraiyati wa sinaiya of agricultural and uh, produced products. Right, products produced in factories as well, min kharijihi from outside of itself. فهو سوق استهلاكية رائجة للتجارة العالمية. So, so it is a marketplace and an استهلاكية is a صفة describing marketplace meaning a consumer market رائجة for something to be رائج is for it to be like widespread or in demand or popular so it's a popular marketplace for uh, التجارة العالمية for world business. في الوطن العربي في الواقع. So the Arab world in reality, في الواقع, متكامل اقتصاديا مع بقية دول العالم المعاصر إنتاجا واستهلاكا. So in reality, the Arab world is متكامل. It is uh, for Two things that be mutakamil with each other is for them, like each one, to complete the other. So mutakamil, it goes together well, it's an essential part, basically. Iqtisadiyan, economically, ma'abaqiyati dual al-alam, with the rest of the countries of the world, al-mu'asr, the modern countries of the world. Right, so al-mu'asr uh, is a sifa describing dual, the plural of dawla. Intajan. In terms of produce, was stihlakin in terms in terms of uh, of uh, consuming. So in tajan in terms of production was stihlakin in terms of consuming. Well asbabu tarikhia and the historical reasons well lead answers can al watanul arabiyu kama ta'alam المهد لحضارات قديمة في واد النيل. He says the Arab world, كما تعلم, as you know, was the mahd, the cradle. Literally, a mahd is a cradle. Was the cradle لحضارات to civilization, the civilizations قديمة to ancient civilizations في واد النيل in the Nile Valley. وفي شبه الجزيرة العربية and in the uh, Arabian Peninsula, or fi Misr, and in Egypt, was Sudan, or fi Iraqi, or fi Yemeni, or Gayriha. Wadira Setuha, 
تعطي فكرة عن نشأة الحضارة الإنسانية على وجه الأرض. Says, and it's studying the studying of it, the studying of uh, the Arab world. تعطي it gives right from أعطى يعطي to give أعطى يعطي it gives فكرة an idea an نشأة الحضارة on the spreading. Of civilization or the beginning of civilization, right? Nesha is the mustar from Nesha Yensha'u Nesha Yensha'u, which means for something to uh, start. Or to spread or develop, right? You can even say about yourself, Nashatu fi al makan, I grew up in this certain place. So it gives you an understanding of the Nash'a, the coming about of Al Hadara, Al Insaniya, human civilization, ala wajhil ard, on the face of the planet. John says, Wadnahiya and from the spiritual perspective. الوطن العربي هو مهد الأديان السماوية الثلاثة. He says the Arab world is the cradle of الأديان, which is the gem of Deen, religion, السماوية, right? نسبة to السماء, the sky or the heavens, so the three heavenly religions. اليهودية والمسيحية والإسلام. وفيه كما تعلم and in it as you know. الأماكن والأراضي المقدسة المقدسة في القدس ومكة والمدينة. And in it, as you know, are the places, الأماكن, the gem of مكان, الأراضي, the gem of أرض, right? So the physical places on the land, المقدسة, that are considered to be holy. في القدس, in Jerusalem. And Mecca and Medina. وأخيرا من الناحية الفكرية, from the point of view of thought, of, of different ways of thinking, من هذه الناحية, from this perspective, حمل الوطن العربي في العصور الوسطى رسالة التقدم الع رسالة التقدم العلمي والفكري إلى العالم كله. He said the Arab world حمل it carried في العصور الوسطى في عصور في العصور الوسطى in the Middle Ages, right? عصور is the gem of عصر, which means a certain period of time, and الوسطى is the مؤنث of الأوسط, that which is in the middle. So, because عصور is a non-human plural, it's going to be uh, described. Its sifa is going to be a singular feminine. Adjective. So instead of saying al awsat we say al wusta. In the Middle Ages, risalat al taqaddum al almi, it carried the message of taqaddum al almi, of of uh, progress in science, scientific progress, wal fikri, and progress in thinking, ila al alami kullihi, into the entire world. Wa dhamina bi dhalika. استمرار الحضارة الإنسانية على وجه الأرض بدون القطاع. And it uh, made sure of with that, ضمنا, it took care of with that, استمرار, the continuation of الحضارة الإنسانية of human civilization على وجه الأرض بدون القطاع, without any cutting off. انقطاع is from the, is the مصدر. From the fa'l, inqata'a, yanqata'u, inqata'an, meaning for something to be cut off. John answers, or thanks his friend, saying, Ahsanta ya Walid. You've done well, O Walid. Thakirta anna hunaka takamulan, iqtisadiyan, bain al watan al arabiyi, wal alam al muasiri, كما أن هناك مصالح وصلات كثيرة 
بينهما ومع ذلك فأنا أرى أن هناك خلافات كثيرة بين الوطن العربي والغربي فهل يمكن أن تلخص لي في كلمات قليلة أسباب هذه الخلافات ذكرت أن هناك تكاملا اقتصاديا you remember to me or you mentioned to me that there is tekamul and this is uh, going together this uh, this complementary nature uh, in terms of economics between the Arab world والعالم المعاصر in the modern world كما أن هناك like there is مصالح uh, benefits وصيلات the plural of sila so مصالح is the plural of maslaha, which is a benefit. Maslaha, and then silat is the plural of silla, which is a connection. Right, so there's benefits and connections, kathiratan, very many, bainahuma, between the two of them. Wa ma'adalik, and with all of that, fa'ana ara, I see, right, in my point of view, anna hunaka khilafat. There are many differences. Khilafat in kathira. Khilafat is the gem of khilaf. Uh, you have a difference of opinion or a difference, uh, just difference in general. Bain al watan al Arabi between the Arab world, wal Gharb and the West. Fahal yumkinu and to lachisali. Can you summarize for me? Fi kalimatin kalilatin in a few words. Asbab hadi hil khilafat. The reasons for these differences. Well, it says, السبب الأساسي, the foundational purpose, the main purpose, هو قضية فلسطين. It's the affair of Palestine. وموقف الغرب منها. And the standing point, right? موقف is literally like the standing, but here meaning the, the stance, I guess you would say. The stance of the West in terms of Palestine. فالغرب ساعد على قيام إسرائيل التي طردت الفلسطينيين من بلادهم وجعلتهم لاجئين بالملايين خارج وطنهم. He says the West, the Arab, ساعد help على قيام إسرائيل in the establishment of Israel التي which طردت طرد يطرد is to uh, push away. Or to banish, right? To uh, to get rid of the one that the the state which taradat al Palestini pushed away the Palestinians. So here, uh, tarada is conjugated for feminine because it's talking about a country, and normally the names of countries are always feminine. Min biladihim pushed them away from their land, wajalathum, and made them lajiin made them refugees بالملايين, by the millions خارج وطنهم, outside of their homeland والغرب قدم وما زال يقدم and the west uh, presents or put forth gives وما زال and continues يقدم to give المساعدات الأسكرية uh, military help والاقتصادية and financial, economic support, right? Musa'adat is uh, different ways of support, right? From Musa'ada, the uh, Mustar, from Sa'ada. So Sa'ada, Yusa'idu, to help someone. Musa'adatan is help itself. And here, Al Musa'adat is the gem of Musa'ada. So it gives them all different types of help Al Askariya, military help. Well, iqtisadiyya, economic help, wal ma'nawiyya li Israel. Ala raghmi min rafdiha al mustamir lil a'tirafi bil hukuk al mashru'ati lil sha'ab al filistini fi ardihi wa watanihi. They do all this ala raghmi min, in spite of. Right, this is important phrase to have ala raghmi min. In spite of رفضها, it's refusing, right? رفض from رفضة, يرفضو, to refuse something. It's refusing المستمر, 
It's continual refusal, right? Mustamir is a sifa of raf. It's continual refusal of i'tiraf, acknowledging the mustar from i'tarafa, ya'tarifu, to acknowledge or to admit bil huquq with the rights al mashru'ati, the the legal rights lishab of the people al filistini the Philist the Palestinian people, the ardihi in their land wa watnihi and in their homeland. And so here the ha is referring to a shab. So even though it's talking about a group of people, the word shab itself is singular. So here using the singular masculine pronoun fi ardihi wa watnihi meaning in the land of this shab, this people in the watan the, the homeland of this people. John asks, وَمَا الْحَلُّ فِي نَظَرِكَ يَا وَلِي What's the solution? الحل. The way out of this problem, في نَظَرِكَ In your point of view, يَا وَلِيد Walid says, لَقَدْ بَدَأَ حِوَارٌ بَيْنَ الْعَرَبُ وَأُرُوبَ لِحَلِّ الْمُشْكِلَاتِ الْقَائِمَةِ بَيْنَهُمَا This is Hiwar, conversation, right? Is the mustar from Hawara, Yuhawiru, to discuss with someone, right? Comes in the Quran in Surah Al Kahf. Uh, Surah Al Kahf, he says, Wahua uh, Yuhawiru, and he is discussing with him. So here, the mustar is Hiwar, Hawara, Yuhawiru, Muhawaratan, Wahiwaran, like Jahada, Yujahidu, Mujahadatan, Wajihadan. He said the hiwar conversation bedaa has begun between al Arab between the Arabs. So this is a mistake here, right? They put a dhamma here, but it should be a kasra because it's coming after baina. Bain al Arabi wa Uruba li hell al mushkilat for taking care of the problems al qaima that are are standing that are existing baina huma between the two of them. وقضية فلسطين يا وليد هل عندك أمل and the affair of Palestine O وليد هل عندك أمل do you have any hope وليد المثل العربي يقول the Arab anecdote says ما ضاع حق وراءه طالب a right is not lost or doesn't go to waste uh, that behind it is somebody trying to talib, uh, somebody who's trying to achieve that right, somebody who's seeking that right. Meaning as long as people keep fighting for their rights, uh, eventually they'll get them. Some of the grammar concepts they introduce in this chapter, they say, تذكر, remember, أن الأسماء الموصولة هي الذي التي اللذان اللذين اللتاني اللتين اللذين اللواتي اللاتي اللائي من and ما. So here they're talking about the الأسماء الموصولة, the connecting names. Basically, these are the connecting nouns. These are basically words that have the meaning of that which. Right. الذي for singular masculine. اللتي for singular feminine. Alladhani for dual masculine and then Alladhani when it's mansub or majroor Alladhani for uh, dual feminine Alladhani uh, in the case when it is mansub or majroor and so you'll notice that the dual case is the only one that changes uh, in the case of it being mansub or majroor generally the asma well, uh, al asma al mawsula are mebni, so they don't change. It's always alladhi or allati. Alladhina for uh, plural. Allawati and also allati or allai. All are for feminine plural. And then men, meaning who, and ma, uh, that which. Right, so men for humans and ma. For non-humans, both basically will have the same meaning as alladi.
So you can say, for example, Ja'ani alladhi uhibbuhu. Came to me the one which alladhi uhibbuhu. Or Ja'ani or Ja'atni allati uhibbuha. Came to me that one that I love her. Or Ja'ani alladhani uhibbuhuma. Came to me the two whom I love. Or Ra'aytu alladhani uhibbuhuma. I saw those two that I love. So in the case of the dua, notice that it will change when it is uh, mansub or majrur. But that's not the case with the singular or with the plural. Right? The singular and the plural will always stay the same. Just these dua will change. Uh, for feminine, ja'atni allatani uhibbuhuma came to me those two uh, who I love or ra'aytu allatayni uhibbuhuma I saw the two whom I love or ja'ani alladhina uhibbuhum came to me those whom I love or if it's feminine allawati or allati or allai you're free to use any of those generally in modern standard I think maybe they use allawati the most in Quran most commonly, it uses allati, but it also uses allai uh, at least once that I can think of off the top of my mind. It might be more than that. Okay, so some important uh, grammar rules about al asma al mausula, these connecting nouns. They say al jumla tulati taqa'u ba'd al ism al mausuli tutimu ma'anahu tusamma. He said the sentence that comes after this ism mausul and completes its meaning is called silat al mausul, the silla of the mausul, that thing that is connected or that thing that connects. So always after alladhi or alladhina or allati or all or allati or allawati there's always going to be a complete sentence after that right like i said ja'ani alladhi uhibbuhu i love him is a complete sentence so these words are going to come to connect a sentence to that which comes before jumlatu sillati or jumlatu sillati la budda an tashtamila ala dhamir al mawsul this sentence of the silla, the silla that comes after the ism mausul, it has to have a damir in it that refers back to that thing it's connecting to it. It has to have a pronoun that connects to the thing that, uh, or that refers to the thing that it's connected to. هذا الضمير يسمى العائد وهو يربط بين المصول وصلته. This pronoun is called an aid. And it connects between the mausul and the silla, the two things that are being connected. So even if we just look, it sounds a little complicated, but I can break it down fairly simple for you. Uh, let's just use the example they have here. Alladhi, the one who yaqulu eats hadihi halwa, this sweet yasuddu fahu. Here, this damir, in fahu, his mouth, refers back to alladhi, right? That's the damir that you have to have. And yasuddu fahu, here is the sentence that is the silatul uh, mawsul, the thing being connected by um, alladhi. So if we look at the example that I came up with earlier, where we said Ja'ani came to me Alladhi the one who Uhibbuhu the one that I love notice how I put here Uhibbuhu right this is my Dhamir that is the A'id it refers back to Alladhi so this sentence, uhibbuhu, has to have an a'id that refers back to the ism mawsul. Now, technically, I could say, ja'ani 
الذي أحب. I could still say جاءني came to me the one I love, but in this case, what we would say is this ضمير is still there. It's just محذوف, right? It's still a part of the sentence, but we've just dropped it from our speaking. We're not saying it, but in meaning, it's still there. Another thing they're going to introduce to you here. This book is good because in the second volume they really start to very heavily give you important uh, grammar concepts. Uh, they're going to talk about the mustar. So here they say, الاسم الذي يدل على معنى الفعل فقط يسمى المصدر. The noun that refers to the meaning of a fi'l, of a verb, is called a mustar, Right, like تحدث, speaking. The fi'l is تحدث in the madi, يتحدث in the mudari. But tahadduth is the mustar, just the idea of speaking itself. You can also make a mustar by adding a harf uh, mustari to the beginning of a fi'l. So here they give you the example of that. They say an plus a fi'l equals a mustar, and also ana plus an ism plus a khabar equals a mustar. الحرف المصدري هو الذي يؤول مع ما بعده بمصدر. The the particle or the article of that makes a مصدر. It's the one that is interpreted. You أول with what is after ما مع بعده بمصدر. So an example of that uh, uh, would be to say something like. أعجبني ما قلت. What you said uh, impressed me. So here saying أعجبني ما قلت has the exact same meaning as saying أعجبني أعجبني. It's supposed to be a ha, but my pen's not working very well. أعجبني so قول is the mustar from قال يقول, right? So when I say ما قلت, what you said, or uh, I shouldn't translate it as what you said because that, you know, kind of gives a different meaning. But ما قلت, if we have the intention here that this ما is the harf of mustari. Then it makes this fi'l into the meaning of the mustar. So the a'jabani ma qultu gives me the exact same meaning of a'jabani qawluka. And you could do the same thing with uh, an, for example. You could say a'jabani a'jabani أن أتكلم معك. It makes me happy to talk with you. As أعجبني أن أتكلم معك has the same meaning of أعجبني أتكلم. معك cuz اتكلم is the mustar from اتكلم so اعجبني ان اتكلم معك has the same meaning of اعجبني اتكلم معك it makes the fi'l well it this harf and the fi'l together give the meaning of the mustar from that fi'l also here they're going to tell us a little bit more about conjugating verbs with weak letters, right? So a verb with a weak letter at the end, we learned before, is called naqis. So sometimes, as the example we saw in the last chapter, that weak letter can be a ya. Now it's going to tell you what to do when that weak letter is an alif, right? So they give us the fi'al yas'a, right? So notice that the last letter in that fi'al is an alif maqsura, yas'a. 
So what do we do with that? They say, لاحظ أن الفعل المضارع إذا كان آخره ألفا فإنها تحذف عند إسناده إلى واو الجماعة وياء المخاطبة. So once again, this uh, weak letter is going to be important in two cases. When we have the wow of something being plural, right, which is in our conjugations for yaf'aluna and taf'aluna, right, conjugating for entum and also for whom, and then also in our conjugation for the second person, singular feminine, that has that ya at the end talking to a woman, one woman, enti, uh, that conjugation for taf'alina. So, uh, when we have the wow of jama'a coming at the end, we're going to, or also in the case with the ya of mukhataba talking to one woman, what you're going to do is, just like we did with the ya, we're going to get rid of the alif at the end of the fi'l. The only difference is we have to make sure in this case that we keep that fatha, the dizan, the second. Uh, root letter of the fi'l, right? So antum, so yes'a, when we conjugate it for antum, becomes antum tas'awna, tas'awna, right? You can't say tas'awna, you say tas'awna. So what we did was, we just got rid of the alif at the end, we added una at the end, but since we kept this fatha here, it becomes awna, awna, because this wow has a sukun on it, right? The only reason it is una is if the letter before the wow has a dhamma on it. In this case, yas'a, we kept that fatha on the uh, ayn and then added a wow with a sukun on it, which is our wow of jama'a, and then a noon with a fatha. So it becomes yas'a, then becomes yas'auna for whom, and when we're doing it for antum, tas'auna. You all strive, right? From sa'a, yas'a. And then same thing for the uh, second person, singular feminine, conjugated for anti, taf'alina, right? We're adding a ya with a sukun on it, and then a noon with a fatha, right? And so our original verb was tas'a. We're going to get rid of this alif at the end, but then we're going to keep this fatha that's on the second root letter of the fi'l and then we're going to add our ya with a sukun and a noon at the end and we get tas'ayna tas'ayna anti tas'ayna also notice that well that as well that when we put the alif of ithnain the dual case at the end we're going to change that Alif Maksura at the end to a ya because otherwise we wouldn't be able to pronounce it. It would be strange that otherwise we would have, you know, if we took yes'a and then we add alif and noon at the end, any like this, then we would have two alifs next to each other. It would be yes'a ni, right? Which you can't do. And also because the actual root letters of sa'a are seen, ain, and yeah, right? An alif can't really be a root letter of a word. So in the, uh, just because of the conjugation, we pronounce it like a alif, sa'a, yes'a, but then when we put it in the dual case, we return it to its original way and it becomes entuma tas'ayani and huma yas'ayani. And when we connect the noon of niswa, Right for feminine plural, both for antunna, you all women, or hunna, they all women. Uh, pretty much, you know, similar same thing to what we did here. Tasaina, we get antunna, tasaina. But how we get it is a little bit different. So what we're doing here is we have tasa. Right, and then we're adding the noon of niswa at the end. It's kind of strange to say tas 
Ana. So what we do is we change this uh, alif maksura at the end back to its original ya that is the root letter of sa'a. So we get tas'ayna. So this is different than uh, in this case where we're actually getting rid of that alif and then adding a ya and a noon versus in this case we're not getting rid of that alif we're changing it to a ya and then only adding a noon but then at the end they both get the same result tas'ayna and tas'ayna this right now I wouldn't worry so much about understanding exactly how it's made I would just worry about memorizing the conjugations and then if you do an advanced book in sarf something like shadha al-arf then you can get all the details of exactly how it works but the best thing in the beginning is just to memorize the conjugations right memorize yes a yes ayani yes auna tas a tas ayani yes ayna tas a tas ayani tas auna tas ayna tas ayani tas ayna as a nas a that's going to be your conjugation for any uh, fi'al with an alif at the end. So just memorize that and then you can apply that same thing anytime you get in the same situation where you have a fi'al naqis with an alif at the end. Yes a, yes ayani, yes auna, tas a, tas ayani, yes ayna, tas a, tas ayani, tas auna. Tas ayna, tas ayani, tas ayna, as a, nas a.